Welcome back. In today's video, I'm finally building more trials again. I made a video about building one quite a while ago and you guys were really excited about it. And since then I kind of procrastinated because uh, building vacuum tubes is very complicated. Also, it's pretty prone to failure. I actually made a, another diode two months ago or something and it leaked. So this is currently the biggest problem that you put all of this work into a vacuum tube you're building and then it ends up leaking. And I have no way of checking this. Um, so it's kind of disencouraging and I kind of procrastinated. But I'm back at it again. So let's uh, try it again build some more tryouts and see if they work and maybe even work better than the first version. This is the diode I made. Originally it's supposed to be a triode, but I decided I will just make it a diode. Yeah, you can see all the deposit and the filament is burned out. Like I said, it failed. And yes, the portion here where the wires are sealed in is kind of dirty but this is just on the outside so it's not like technically it's not a bad seal it's not looking very bad or like there's bubbles on the wires that are sealed in but anyway what i don't like about the construction style that i'm doing right now with this vacuum tube and the other vacuum tubes is that i'm starting with a base down here and i'm basically spot welding all of the components to this base and this makes things very wobbly, very loosey-goosey, and that's not really good. So I want to fix that, and I have an idea how I would do that. So this is what I came up with. This right here is just a test, but I basically have all the components attached to some glass beads and melt the glass beads together, and this makes it possible to have all the components very close together and very parallel and i can also make the whole thing the whole triode and then attach it to the base of the vacuum tube after and it's also a bit more convenient all right this is what i came up with so far here's the plate this is the grid and this time i made the grid with a very very fine wire and this should improve things a lot because a thick wire will block a lot of the electrons and it's better to use a very fine wire. And like I said, I'm basically going to attach them by these glass beads and with the filament, I have to see how I will do that. I could run it just across, but then I would have one connection here and the other connection here and I would have to loop back around or something or I could make a V shape or something Let's see how I will do that. All right, I put together all of the triode components. I didn't film it because I had no idea what I was doing myself. I think it looks okay. It doesn't look good, but also doesn't really look bad. The components are pretty close together. I made the filament out of two tungsten wires and they're not tensioned, so they might touch the grid, but I think overall this looks pretty okay. And I will take that and move on with the next step. And the next step is to build a base for the vacuum tube where the wires seal into the glass. And as you can see, I did this already. It's a bit fiddly and complicated, so if you want to see that, check out the other tryout video I made. But basically I just have a piece of glass and seal in the wires in there that I pre-made. And it's a little bit wider here. And this is going to get attached to the package, the tryout itself. And then I have the envelope. And this is just a test tube that I blew out a little bit. And I'm going to attach a tube here where the vacuum pump gets attached. And then this will be sealed in, sealed down here. And that's the tryout.
I have attached the two components together. And now what's left to do is to attach this tiny titanium filament between this pin and one of the other pins. And this will act as a getter when it's heated up and will absorb any oxygen and nitrogen and stuff like that. Also, I just realized this thing is pretty long right now. Uh, I could have probably cut down the pins here, but you know, I don't want to damage the seal. I'm slowly realizing how long this thing actually is. I didn't really pay attention to that, but I think next time I will actually go back to attaching the electrodes directly to the base and not do this with this intermediate step. Then it should be much comp more compact and uh, I will just support this with the glass beads on top. But for now, I think I will just put this in, seal this relatively quickly, pump this down and see how well this works and just use this as a test platform and then I will either use this or make another base and make something more compact. But for now let's see if the arrangement of the electrodes and the dimensions are good and then we can proceed and make more tubes like that. All right, the tube is now sealed off. And the last step is to heat up the titanium filament in there and this will absorb the rest of the gas. And then it's a waiting game to see if any gas is leaking back in there or if this tube is actually completely sealed. All right, the tube is sealed and to check if it leaked, I will turn on this Tesla coil right here and I will hold it onto the Tesla coil and if there's any gas inside, I will see this because it will be glowing, it will get excited by the Tesla coil. This, this doesn't work. I did put some epoxy into the base um, to stop the leak because some people got it, got a vacuum tight seal with just epoxy, but I'm really not a fan of this and I would like to get this to work without epoxy. Um, yeah, but this basically means I can redo the entire tube again. Uh, this is also the reason this project takes such a long time. I think I uh, said I'm going to work on this end of last year, which was 2024, and we have now June. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I will uh, get back to other projects as well that are a little, a little bit uh, faster because this, this will probably take some more time. But yeah. Good news everyone, I put some epoxy into the base and it's probably stopped the leak. I'm not really confident that this will hold in the long run. But it is actually holding vacuum right now and I can test the tube. And the tube works better than the previous tube I built, which is really good. So I put together this kind of messy test circuit again. This is the high voltage thing just a cheap high voltage thing and it's supplying 400 volts and it's going through this milliamp meter to 
these two resistors, this is 66 kilo ohms, and then to the plate of the tube. And ground is connected to one of the filaments, filament connections. And uh, yeah, the filament gets its own power supply. This is just a constant current source and it's going through the um, multimeter here. And this is going to be the filament current. And this is going to be the emission current through the tube. So let's turn the filament current up and see how well this works. And we're at 2 amps and it's slowly going up. This is actually pretty bright. 2.2 amps and we're at 2 milliamps emission current. Yeah, it seems to be stable right now as well. That's really good. I'm not sure how long this will last because you can see the tube is really bright. So I have to heat up the filament quite a bit to get these two milliamps flowing. So uh, this is definitely this definitely needs some improvement, but at least I get a lot of current flowing through the tube, and you could actually probably build something useful with this tube. I also tested the grid with a nine volt battery. I don't know if the change in current you're seeing there is any good. Let me know in the comments. So I guess I got some improvements over the last vacuum tube I made. However, because it's so difficult to get a tube that seals well, I'm just going to do this kind of as a side thing and upload a new video about this when I have some tubes that work, I guess. In the meantime, I want to work on some other projects like making nitric acid by the Oswald process. Part 2 is hopefully coming out soonish, as well as other chemistry related projects. So I think in the long term I will do some videos about chemistry as well as building scientific instruments like the spectrometer that I built in the last video. So if you want to see that, then subscribe and until next time.